The most powerful nuclear reactor in the whole world used to be in Canada, uh, in Ontario, at a place called Chalk River Laboratories. The reactor was built in the summer of 1947. It was used mainly for research purposes. And one day, about five years into the life of that reactor, in December 1952, the reactor exploded. A combination of human error and mechanical failure caused the reactor to melt down, which then set off a series of explosions. It is a miracle that no one was hurt. But in 1952, this was still uncharted territory, and this was still very dangerous. This is, you have to keep in mind, I mean, this is before Fukushima, this is before Chernobyl even. This meltdown at Chalk River was the world's first nuclear reactor disaster ever. And so even though the explosions of the meltdown didn't kill anybody, they were very concerned about what they were going to do with all the radiation and the ongoing threat of the still decomposing reactor. There was no model, no instruction manual for how to clean this thing up. Radioactive material had escaped into the atmosphere. Uh, the rest of the plant was flooded with radioactive water. The reactor itself was still very, very highly radioactive. But the whole thing needed to be addressed. It wasn't going to take care of itself. You couldn't just leave it. It needed to be shut down and taken apart and then removed from the site so it wouldn't cause any more destruction. Well, how do you do that without subjecting the people working on that to a deadly amount of radiation? To figure it out, um, the Canadian government enlisted help from the U.S. government, and specifically from the U.S. Navy. The U.S. Navy by that time had an elite nuclear submarine program. They therefore had a lot of trained engineers who were experienced with nuclear technology. Even so, they knew that anybody working on this shutdown effort could only spend about 90 seconds inside the reactor before they would hit what was considered to be the limit for radiation exposure. So what they did, again, back in 1952, was they assembled these crews. They thought they were the best people on Earth to be able to handle this kind of a crisis. But then they had to make a very specific plan that would split the whole task of taking apart the nuclear reactor. They'd split the whole thing, everything they needed to do, into individual 90-second steps because nobody could do anything inside the reactor that lasted more than 90 seconds. So the way it worked was one man would run in and, like, unscrew a bolt if that would take 90 seconds. Then he would run out. Then the next man would run in after his 90 seconds was up. The next guy would unscrew the next bolt or would do whatever the next step was. In order to plan this to these tiny little increments of time, they actually built a full-sized replica of the reactor at a nearby playground, and they practiced every single step of the shutdown and the breakdown and the disassembly of this reactor. They practiced it all on the replica. That is how they took this thing apart, one bolt at a time, one 90-second work shift at a time. It sounds insane, but it actually worked. The melted-down reactor was safely disassembled and removed from the site. The entire thing actually was reassembled and back up and running safely in just a few years. It was, of course, a success that came at great risk to the men who had to run into that radioactive reactor to take it apart bit by bit. The man who was in charge of this incredibly risky, incredibly innovative operation was just 28 years old. He was a lieutenant in the Navy with nuclear submarine experience. He was one of the only men on the entire planet at the time who had the skill set to develop this kind of a plan and to himself go down inside a melted-down nuclear reactor. Again, as a young man at the time, young man from Georgia, his name was James Earl Carter. He went by Jimmy for short. Before Jimmy Carter became president, before he became a politician of any kind, he was in the Navy. He's actually the only American president to have graduated from the U.S. Naval Academy at Annapolis. He served in the Navy for seven years as a submariner. That's how he got chosen for the prestigious nuclear submarine program and how he ended up in command of the elite team that saved Canada, <laughs> this team that saved Ontario from further nuclear disaster after the world's first full-scale nuclear reactor disaster. He himself spent... 89 seconds, one minute and 29 seconds inside the chalk point reactor, unscrewing, you know, his bolt or whatever his one piece of the task was. 
These days, the recommended radiation exposure would be well below what Jimmy Carter endured in those 89 seconds. He said later that in testing after the incident, his urine tested positive for radioactivity for six months. Today, at 98 years old, almost 70 years since he walked into that nuclear reactor, Jimmy Carter is home with his family. He's on hospice care. He's in the same town in Georgia where he was born. In these, which are likely to be his final days to mark President Carter's service to the Navy and to the nation, the U.S. Naval Academy has announced that it's renamed a major building on campus uh, in his honor. The building was previously named Maury Hall, named after a Confederate naval chief. That building has now officially been renamed Carter Hall. Well-wishers visited President Hart Carter's hometown of, of Plains, Georgia, today. People gathered in the auditorium of the high school, where the former president and his wife, Rosalind, both attended school. A historian asked the crowd to take the Carter Challenge. He said, do something nice for somebody who needs it. If you have someone who needs a phone call, make the phone call. If somebody needs a visit, go make that visit. The Carter Challenge. Hearts of the Nation with President Carter and his family tonight.